Hello, everybody. Jim Olson here with Western Trading Post and also your current vice president of the National Bit, Spur, and Saddle Collectors Association. And today I'd like to visit with you for just a minute about saddles, in particular, Mexican saddles. You see, I'd be willing to wager that any extensive saddle collection, probably the fanciest saddle in that collection, is Mexican in origin. And there's a reason for that. See, the Mexican vaqueros have been blinging out their saddles for a long time, much longer than anyone in America. As a matter of fact, that's where the root of all cowboy gear comes from, is from the Mexican vaqueros. The Mexican vaqueros learned to tend to the cattle and horses and, and that the Spaniards had brought across way back in the late 14 and 1500s. The vaquero, who is typically a uh, either full or partial blood native from Mexico, they're the ones who learned how to first tend to stock on vast open ranges long before anyone else in the world had done that. And they invented things such as roping. They would braid their own riatas and learn how to rope. So one of the first things that they did is they took a Spanish military saddle and adapted it and put a saddle horn on it. That's where the saddle horn comes from today is because the vaqueros invented roping and they needed to have a way to, to dally, of course, you know, a way to, to handle their ropes whenever they were riding. When the American cowboys came to the Southwest and first started gathering wild cattle, who did they encounter? They encountered the Mexican vaqueros and they ad started adapting their, their gear and their saddles and their traditions and, you know, made them Americanized and whatnot. As a matter of fact, in about the 1830s, a man named Richard Hope, who is the father of the Texas saddle, basically, uh, it's called the Hope Saddle. Um, he was one of the first ones to Americanize a Mexican saddle and start the tradition of, of what we now know as the Western stock saddle. But none of that would have happened if we hadn't have encountered the Mexican vaquero first. In Mexico, there's typically three different types of Mexican saddles. There's a military saddle, which, of course, the military rode back in the day. We don't see much of those anymore because nowadays soldiers ride around in tanks and on planes. Uh, there was the montura, which is uh, basically that's the everyday working man's saddle. It's a it's a plain version of a Mexican saddle that uh, without a lot of bling, and it's actually what the uh, the Americans started adapting way back in the day was uh, uh, their own version of a montura. Then we have what's called a charro saddle. And a charro saddle is a little bit later in the evolution of Mexican saddles, but they are the fancy saddles. They're, they're the same basic form as a montura, but they're typically all blinged out. They have all the pitiada work, which is uh, uh, embroidery from the uh, maguey cactus fiber. They typically will have a lot of silver work. This saddle sitting here beside me right now has a lot of real ornate silver work on it. Even the all the metal pieces here, all the D-rings and whatnot, has inlaid silver. They'll often have gold in, uh, work on them too. This one here has some gold um, monograms and stuff right on top of the horn cap. So uh, the Charo saddle is really just a fancy version of a Montura with some other slight modifications as well. This particular saddle here with me, it also has some really neat history that goes with it, which, which makes it a saddle that, that I really enjoy talking about. And the history associated with this saddle is the fact that in 1932, this very saddle was a gift from a former president of Mexico to a man named Richard Byrd, or Admiral Byrd. Now, Admiral Byrd, back in the day, he was a rock star in aviation, just like uh, Charles Lindbergh or Amelia Earhart. They, they were the rock stars of the day back then. And after he was the first man to fly to both the North and the South Pole, the former president of Mexico gifted him this saddle. And the Bird family had it for many years. And whenever they sold it, they sold it with a letter of provenance stating where it had come from. I am honored to be in the presence of such a wonderful piece of history as this. Here at Western Trading Post, we are passionate about preserving and perpetuating our rich Western history and its heritage. 
And one of the ways that we've been able to do that is by becoming involved in the National Bit, Spur, and Saddle Collectors Association. If you'd like to find out more about that organization, they have a website. It's called nbssca.org. That's nbssca.org. Or if you'd like to find out more about Western Trading Post and the amazing pieces of history that come through our door on a regular basis, you can check us out at westerntradingpost.com.